Common Cardiac Diagnostic Testing. This will review 12 lead chest x-ray, echocardiography, Holter monitoring, transesophageal echocardiography, cardiac catheterization, percutaneous coronary intervention, balloon angioplasty, coronary stents, exercise tolerant tests, and radionuclide imaging. A 12 lead ECG has electrodes placed on the patient's limb and on the surface of the chest. The overall magnitude of the heart's electrical potential is then measured from 12 different angles and recorded over a period of time, usually about 10 seconds. In this way, the overall magnitude and direction of the heart's electrical depolarization is captured at each moment throughout the cardiac cycle. A chest x-ray is done to detect enlargement of the heart and pulmonary congestion. A quick review looking at the P wave, it's a sequential activation, the depolarization of the right and left atria. QRS complex, right and left ventricular depolarization. Normally the ventricles are activated simultaneously. ST wave, ventricular repolarization. U wave, origin for this wave is not clear, but probably represents after depolarizations in the ventricles. PR interval is the time interval from onset of atrial depolarization, which is the P wave, to onset of ventricular depolarization, the QRS complex. The QRS duration is of the ventricular muscle depolarization. QT interval is duration of ventricular depolarization and repolarization. RR interval is duration of the ventricular cardiac cycle, and it's an indicator of ventricular rate. The PP interval is duration of the atrial cycle, and an indicator of the atrial rate. The image on the left shows a mediastinal and cardiac margins on a chest x-ray. The one on the right, not so good. Fulminant pulmonary edema from congestive heart failure. Echocardiography uses sound waves to reveal size, shape, and motion of cardiac structures, evaluates the heart wall thickness, valve structure, differentiates murmurs, an echo can also pinpoint areas of heart muscle that are not contracting well because of poor blood flow or injury from a previous MI and detect possible blood clots inside the heart, fluid buildup in the pericardium, and problems with the aorta. Halter monitoring is used to determine how the heart responds to normal activity. The monitor may also be used after an MI to diagnose heart rhythm problems when starting a new heart medication. It may be used to diagnose palpitations, reasons for fainting, slow heart rate. During the 24-hour Holter monitoring studies, adhesive electrodes are placed on the chest to be worn for 24 hours to monitor the heart rhythm. The patient should wear loose-fitting clothes, no showers or baths while undergoing the test, and do not use electric blankets while going through Holter monitoring. Transesophageal echocardiography, also known as a TEE, provides a clear image because less tissue for sound waves to pass through. The probe is placed into the mouth and then down the esophagus. It can also be placed in the stomach, and the patient lies on their left side. Cardiac catheterization. Chest pain might be a symptom of coronary heart disease, and a cardiac catheterization can show whether plaque is narrowing or blocking the coronary arteries. Basically, it determines coronary lesions, size, location, evaluate ventricular function, and measures heart pressures. Percutaneous coronary intervention. During cardiac catheterization, a PCI, also known as coronary angioplasty, is where a balloon is inflated, pushing the plaque against the artery wall. This creates a wider path for blood to flow to the heart. Balloon angioplasty allows the physicians time to open the narrow arteries without major surgery. It is similar to a cardiac catheterization where a long, thin catheter is inserted into the heart and arteries. A small balloon at the tip of the catheter is inflated at the side of the blockage, pushing the plaque against the artery wall. Coronary stents is a small, mesh-like device within the artery. These devices can improve the long-term outcomes by reducing the need for repeat procedures. After the insertion of a stent, patients are prescribed medications to prevent blood clots from forming and blocking the stent. Exercise tolerance tests, also known as a stress test, gathers information about how the heart works during physical activity. Because exercise makes the heart pump harder and faster than usual, an exercise stress test can reveal problems within the heart that might not be noticeable otherwise. An exercise stress test usually involves walking on a treadmill or riding a stationary bike while the heart rhythm, blood pressure, and breathing are monitored. The exercise stress test is recommended if there is a suspect of coronary artery disease or an irregular arrhythmia. The test may also be used to guide treatment if the person has already been diagnosed with a heart condition. Radionuclide imaging. 
uses a gamma camera to create an image following injection of radioactive material. This test is done to evaluate coronary artery disease, valvular or congenital cardiac disorders, cardiomyopathy, and other cardiac disorders. Radionuclide imaging exposes patients to less radiation than do comparable x-ray studies. However, because the radioactive material is retained in the patient briefly, sophisticated radiation alarms, like in airports, might be triggered by the patient for several days after such testing.